One of the hardest things about being in quarantine has been wanting to support my kids in homeschooling. It has been one of the biggest challenges that I have found throughout being quarantined at home and through this time of pandemic. And before we get into today's episode, I wanted to share with you one of the best resources that I have found during this time. My son, Peyton, who is eight years old, going on nine, has been joining Dave Anderson and Blake Fly in their Stuck at Home Society. This is an online space that they have created for kids from the ages of eight till 12 to have conversations. These guys are two powerhouse, powerhouse entrepreneurs wanting to serve kids. They have incredible crow programs across the nation in high schools and universities. And now because we're all stuck at home, they've created this stuck at home society. And when I tell you that it has been one of the best things that Peyton has done during this time, and he looks forward to it to it week after week. I wanted to share it with you because if you have a child around this age that needs support, right? That maybe is getting frustrated, maybe is getting super bored during this time and that you want them to be engaged and in this community online, I definitely recommend looking up the Stuck at Home Society. I will include all the details wherever you are watching this so that you can get your kids engaged. To be honest, my son looks forward to it. It is the best two hours of the week that he has. And truthfully, it gives me two hours to myself to have a coffee, to take a shower, to have a break, and to just breathe. I hope you will join them. It has been an incredible resource for me. How are you guys managing throughout this time? One of the things that I'm committed to on this podcast is to have the conversations that matter. And one of the things that I think that matters a lot is how we honor our lives. And I believe that, you know, part of this is that we are physical beings, right? And that our bodies are our temples, and that to live your best life, honoring all parts of your life are super important. One of the things that I have learned through my 40 years, now that I'm 40, is that for me, a powerful access point to living my best life has been through exercise, through fitness, as a way to become more disciplined, become more focused, feel empowered. And because of that, I've been able to alter so many things in my life, right? It has been the foundation of my strength, my discipline, how I go through life and to be of service, right? I mean, I was a dental hygienist for 10 years, but I landed back on fitness, landed back on the conversation of how powerful exercise can be as a way to feel good in your body, to feel empowered in your life, as a tool, as a practice to catapult everything else, whether it's your business, your relationships, how you honor the way you interact, how you energetically are, how you can alter the way you speak to yourself. But part of my commitment to having these conversations with you every single week is sharing the good, bad, and the ugly. If you've tuned in before, I've spoken about the physical challenges of physical injuries I've had. Well, today I want to share my struggle through this pandemic. One of the largest things that I've been dealing with is homeschooling my kids. Like many of you working moms that are at home, you've had to be with your kids homeschooling full time. It's just the reality. Our kids are not in school. They have to continue their schooling. So we're doing homeschooling. I never anticipated, I mean, no one anticipated this pandemic, but I never anticipated this would be where I'm getting stuck. It has been the most challenging things to support my kids in their academics in a way that it is it is productive. But I wanted to do this episode because what I've been learning about myself in the last four weeks is how 
my past childhood, whether you want to call it traumas or issues or whatever you want to call it, have been coming up. Now, you know, I don't talk a lot about it on the podcast, but I've done a lot of work on myself in my self-esteem, self-worth over the last better part of 20 years, if not more. You know, I had a normalish childhood, but coming from an Asian father who was born and raised in Japan, came here in his late 20s, he came with a lot of cultural differences than Canadians, right? And growing up with a very strict Japanese father with almost a Japanese upbringing from what I feel was really challenging, right? Nothing was ever good enough. And look, this is really the conversation of how we all do the best we can. And my hope is that sharing this with you will maybe give you some insights or you can ask yourself questions of like, okay, how can I step back when we are maybe reacting to our kids, overreacting maybe with ourselves, maybe not reacting because we're completely stuck and not knowing what to do, right? And this is part of it, this, right? Having the dialogue of what is working, what's not working, and what is going on in your life. And my hope is that, not that I'm a parenting expert by any means, <laughs> excuse me, but that perhaps this will give you some insight on how you are parenting and how maybe there are some resources out there that can support you a little bit differently than you feel supported now right? So being brought up by a really strict Asian father and, you know, my mother following suit with that is that growing up, everything that I did in schooling academically was never good enough. As young as six, I remember that I was never studying enough. I was never doing enough. Nothing I did was enough. And I remember, and it was probably really early on, excuse me, that I came home with a really great mark, like 92 in math or something. And I remember feeling so proud and bringing it to my dad. And I remember him saying, what happened to the other eight or 5% or whatever it was? And, you know, of course, we try to encourage our kids different ways and not knowing our child's what actually makes them spark or what really bothers them. He didn't know. But I took it like, it just, I wasn't enough. Like my best, 92%, which prior to that, I thought was amazing, just wasn't good enough. And therefore I wasn't enough. And I wasn't worth the approval. And nothing I could do academically was going to be successful. So that perpetuated through most of my studies that I felt like everything was effortful, like I wasn't smart enough, like I wasn't able to succeed. <clears throat> and because being in an Asian family, you know, academics is this pinnacle of where you're trying to get to and trying to be. And look, I was in a gifted program since grade four, um, you know, where the, the smart kids, whatever smart kids that tested well at that time were put in classes where we were challenged in different ways and taught to think differently and outside the box, you know? And I clearly was smart enough to be there. And, you know, I did okay in high school. Um, I got through university, instead of study dental hygiene, got into the testing at the time when it was quite rigorous then to get in. I wasn't the smartest. Clearly, my father wasn't pleased with my performance. But the reason why I am sharing this is that I've done a lot of work on this issue of my self-worth, being good enough, being smart enough, and all the framing around being brought up in that environment. And I thought that I had dealt with it until I was faced with homeschooling my kids. One of my core values is supporting people's social-emotional understanding and learning of themselves. That is very important to me with my clients, that they feel seen and heard, that we look at those emotional triggers that are holding them back 
or perpetuating emotional eating or not making them feel good enough, not making them feel worthy of success when they obtain fitness or weight loss success, right? That is one of my core pillars in my life and in my business with my children. But what has shown up for me is that I have been really choked up with the academics for my kids' homeschooling. I know intellectually that the social emotional connection during this time of overwhelm, of fear, of uncertainty is more important than anything that they're going to learn from me. I'm not a teacher. I don't know how to teach math the new way they learn it. My daughter is in Montessori. My son is in regular curriculum. I don't know how they do it anymore. I'm going to teach them a really messed up way of how I do it. And that's probably not the best for them. But I've been really stuck on pushing them, on getting them to succeed and accomplish the work that is set out for them. You know, my kids go to these great schools that have been trying to over-deliver to substantiate why they're going to these schools and to keep them there, which I get and I appreciate. And a friend of mine just recently reminded me that it is a business, right? They're in the business of accomplishing. They're in the business of showing statistics like our kids through COVID-19 were able to maintain this, 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 whatever, right? And I know this, but regardless, I have been getting stuck on their accomplishments in during this time. And it has been driving me crazy. And it has been putting extreme stress on my kids. And so I share this because on this podcast, in my online programs, with my clients, I often talk about how do we get present to what is and how do we mitigate stressors in our lives that sometimes we blow out of proportion. Well, typically I'm good at practicing what I preach, but around this conversation of homeschool, homeschooling with my kids, it has been so challenging, guys. I have had multiple breakdowns around it. I have had multiple cry sessions around it. And what I've realized over the last better part of three weeks now and journaling about it, if you haven't heard me speak about journaling, I think that journaling is a really therapeutic cathartic, powerful process of transmuting what you have in your head onto paper. And in that time kind of disseminates what is going on so that you can kind of download it and then take an objective viewpoint and say, okay, what is going on? Why am I getting stuck on that? Or why does this keep coming up? And so what I noticed through my journaling and my patterning of what I've been doing with my kids on like being really super militant is that I'm still stuck at what those expectations my father had and placed on me that I thought I had dealt with, right? Like done the work around it and it's still coming up. And what I've realized is that it's not fair for my kids. What I've realized and even talking about it here gets me emotional because this time in this pandemic is a really great opportunity. Yes, it is overwhelming and stressful. People are dying, people are sick. Our healthcare workers are overworked, overrun, so many things, right? People are losing their jobs, their homes, so much. There is also the other side that there is this great opportunity of growth. There's the great opportunity for our kids to be in this space of love and feeling supported and not having to take on the burden of our stress during this time because it is in the face of challenge, right? I tell this to my clients. It is in the face of, you know, there is never the perfect time to do the weight loss program, never the perfect time to take on the fitness, never the perfect time to take on your health as your wealth, never the perfect time for you to say, screw this, I'm fed up with this extra 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds, whatever it is, there's never the perfect time. Life is going to keep showing up and happening. That is it. This is life. So if you can take it on in those times of life happening, because life is going to keep happening, that is when you're winning, right? But I've been 
I don't want to say losing, but I have been not walking the walk of the talk I talk, right? Homeschooling is great. It offers a, a structure and some people are thriving in it. Good for you. I commend you. That is not what's going on in my household. It has been a challenge. It has been a source of overwhelm for me. It is driving me to drink, like no joke, right? And what I'm working on and I'm trying to pause and be cognizant of every single day is that there are things I can do to support my kids that will support them academically, right? We can read, we can do some math, we can actually bake and do the math within the baking. We can, you know, build something and do the math and the physics and the science within that, that it doesn't have to be this obsessive, like I've been obsessing, sitting down and like, let's go math time. Let's go science time. It doesn't have to be this overwhelm. There can be freedom around it. Because like I said before, what I value so much is the social emotional learning and for my kids to feel connected. And I often, often, I always talk about self-compassion and grace. This is the time to practice that not only with ourselves, but with our children, right? that this is how they learn about self-compassion and grace and self-love and self-care. If I can't do that for myself, if I can't offer that to them in this structure of homeschooling, then what the fuck am I talking about full of shit, right? Excuse my language. But that's like literally the pep talk I had to give myself. Like, what are you doing, Catherine? Like talking about this self-compassion and grace when you can't even offer it to yourself in the structure of homeschooling, it is breaking me. And so I made a decision a week and a half ago to say no more. It stops here. I emailed both my kids' teachers. And these are like good prominent schools and said, look, we made a family decision. And I spoke to my kids about it. I said, look, you know, I know this is overwhelming and nobody wants to get the work done. I get it. It's hard. You're not at school. You're at home. Like you think that this is an environment where it should be fun and it should be. But we also have this almost obligation that I want you guys to like not get behind. Right. But I said, what is most important to me is your happiness, not feeling stress, not feeling agitated with everything. Right. And we made a decision. I said, do we need to pull back from school? Is this what you guys want? And it doesn't mean free ride. Like we're not sitting on TV all day long. We're going to be productive, but in different ways, right? And is this what you need? And they said, yes. And so I took the step. I emailed the teachers and I said, look, I'm sorry. I know that there are things that they, you want them to com complete, but we're not going to do it. We made a family decision that we need to feel supported and safe and not stressed. And this is the way that it's going to look right now. And it was a tough decision, right? Like who am I as a parent to say no to education? But you know what, guys? I'm hoping that this conversation will empower you to find what's right for you and what's right for your family. Because for me right now, this is right for our family. I don't know what is more exhausting, me having to build cardboard forts and make games out of cardboard and to paint and to draw. But that's fun, right? That's the things that I loved as a kid. That's the things that gets my kids excited and wanting to participate in. That's what's alleviating the stress right now. That's what's adding self-compassion to myself and reminding myself that it's okay. They will catch up when they're back in school next year, September. The teachers will have to rise to the occasion and reteach because the reality is that some parents are literally both healthcare workers are not able to do the homeschooling thing. That is just the way that it is. And so my hope is that you pause between those moments of losing your shit like I have been doing around homeschooling, around whatever it is that you 
write that down and say, I am losing my shit because <laughs> my kids are driving me insane because I hate homeschooling because, right? And that you can say that it's okay, that you can offer yourself some self-love, some self-compassion, let go of the shoulds and the woulds and those crazy expectations that we far too often place on ourselves and say, what do I need right now? What does my family need right now? And become hypervigilant and hyper-present to what is, right? If your child is like my son who was completely overwhelmed and upset all the time and angry, angry, right? Angry, right? That he just needed to sit with me and read a book and we would draw and we would talk and we would build a stupid cardboard fort. But when I tell you that it, he's a different child this week than he was two weeks ago, that my daughter feels seen, she feels like mommy listens, and that's what we all want, right? We as adults want to be seen, to be heard. And one of the gifts that I feel like I have as a fitness coach, accountability provider, business person, is that I create the space for people to see their greatest self. That's what I do. I do it inside my business group. I do it with people who've hired me for business consulting. I do it with my clients every single day that show up for themselves, not believing themselves, but because I see their greatness of their healthiest, highest version, right? I create that space. So now I'm choosing consciously to create that space for my children so that they can live into their brightest light, to their greatest version. That's all I can do as a parent, right? The, le- the rest of it, I have to let it go. And the truth is, they're in grade one and two. Like, I don't know what my issue is. And the truth also is, is if they were in university or they were in grade 12, what's another year in 50, 60, 70 years? It's actually not going to make a difference, right? Yes, they may be in high school for one extra year, but you've seen the government pumping out more money into the system because people that have graduated right now can't get jobs right? So that one year is going to actually support them and nurture them and love them and and lift them up, right? And so I just wanted to share, you know, maybe it's an invitation for you to take a look at how you've been homeschooling throughout this time. If you've been doing great, God bless you, because I've been really struggling. Um. But join me next week because, and I shared this resource with you in the beginning of this episode, and if you are still here, thank you for staying to the end. But next week I am interviewing Keika Dasgupta, a friend of mine, a brilliant leader in the education sector, in the business sector, in marketing and branding, as well as, as Dave Anderson and Blake Fly. The reason why I'm sharing this with you is that Keika is creating an amazing three-part kind of series, walking you through tangible tools as parents that we can use to connect with our kids during this time. I know I will be using it. I know that it is a powerful resource, so I encourage you to use it. That will be on Monday, excuse me, and later on next week, I will be speaking face-to-face with Dave Anderson and Blake Fly. If you don't know about them, you need to find them. I'm going to post the details below. Stuck at Home Society. My son is actually on a call right now with them. Every single week, twice a week, they are doing conversations with kids that matter. We're all stuck at home. And my son feels really disconnected, misses his friends. And yeah, we do a little play date stuff like this on Zoom. But this is, these guys, Dave and Blake, have created this interactive community online of these kids ages seven to like 12, I think. And they are un, 
believable. When I tell you that Peyton looks forward to this conversation every week and he shows up like a different kid after getting off the calls, it is unbelievable. So definitely join them, find them, the Stay at Home Society, Dave Anderson, Blake Fly. I'll post the details wherever you're watching this. So join me next week for those conversations. I wish you a beautiful rest of the week. And I hope that this offered you some value, right? Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye for now.